On today's podcast, I speak with Allison Eberhardt. She is the owner of Et Vola Events. They are based in central Wisconsin, and they are a wedding and a coordinating event planning company. Uh, we spoke about anything from shoe wear to all the events and places that Allison has traveled. Um, interesting fact about Allison is she went to school in India, and that's where her calling for wedding event coordinating came to her. Please enjoy the podcast. I would like to welcome Allison Eberhardt to the podcast. Her company is named Et Voila Events. Allison, thank you for joining me. Yeah, of course, Scott. Thanks so much for having me today. All right. Um, let's get right into it. Um, your first, uh, what made you first want to become a wedding planner and what other events, what other um, services do you offer? Sure. Well, that is a a loaded question, <laughs> but I'll, and I'll try to I'll try to um, keep the answer a little short. But I always say that wedding planning found me, and uh, it's such a unique story that I really enjoy sharing. But at the time um, that I discovered my passion and love for wedding planning, I was living in India, and during that time, um, I wanted to be a um, I was studying. Uh, to become a pediatrician, and um, and I was also working in an orphanage in India. And during that time, I, I was I really enjoyed what I was doing, um, but I wasn't passionate about it. And I was, you know, feeling a little homesick, perhaps. And during one weekend, I was invited to an Indian wedding, and I went. And I can only describe it as absolutely magical and incredible. And it was then that I discovered my love for weddings and events, the the food, the culture, the bright colors, again, magical. And during that time, um, I ended up then coming home and I was, um, I had that choice, you know, like, oh, what do I want to do? And so I I uh, continued school um, for hospitality management and then started working for a company. And when I was working for the company, I started um, this group, um, working in this group as a, a VIP concierge and in training with this elite group of concierges who are at the most fabulous hotels around the world, where it's Carlton's high-end luxury hotels and training with this group of concierge um, uh, individuals. And while I was doing that, I was working on executive retreats and corporate events and on the side, just started dabbling with weddings and really enjoyed it. And then eventually, after time, really, it was gaining that confidence in myself. Um, I then launched at Fola Events. And then our specialty is now focusing on, well, we still do corporate events and other sorts of events, but our real specialty is wedding planning and design. So your first wedding experience was an Indian wedding. That must have been something. I know, oh my gosh, it was. Yeah. I know they can last for like days. Yes, so. yes. <laughs> very yeah. magical and very a long celebration. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That, that must have been... I can only imagine. I've I've um, never had the opportunity to film an Indian wedding, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if I would. I, I'm not sure how I would uh, approach it myself. <laughs> I've watched you know videos on it and how to do yeah. it, and um, it's just the the pricing behind it. I I'm not sure. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. Um, so, how long have you been in business? Like, is it just do you just service the um, Central Wisconsin area? Uh, no. Um, so at Full Eye Events has been in business for the past four years. Um, I've been doing events um, for over 10 years. So have um, a ton of experience with corporate events and, and weddings, but at Full Eye Events has been in business for 10 years. And, um, and we, we are based, our studio is based out of central Wisconsin. However, that doesn't limit us um, whatsoever. We have um, we have traveled to Milwaukee and Madison all throughout Wisconsin, Door County. Um, we've been in California um, and Texas. So really- I, I saw that you were just in Florida. 
Yes, I was just in Miami. <laughs> yeah. Big um, difference in um, weather. Weather. No, oh, my gosh. I know. I know. <laughs> I was just talking this morning with one of um, the individuals that I was traveling with, and um, I said, oh, my goodness, I would give anything to be back in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I think it's going to be negative 50 degrees tomorrow. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, it's going to be really cold. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, it'll probably be completely different when this podcast is completely live. But right now we're um, at the tail end of January. And, yes, just thinking about being in Miami um, is what is getting me through this, yeah. <laughs> this couple, next couple <laughs> weeks. <laughs> Definitely. So um, how many weddings do you take on a year? How many events do you do a year? Sure. Well, that is, that's a little, that question is a little difficult to answer because, um, it's not like we strive to say, oh, we need to, we need to have 10 weddings this year or we need to have 15. It's really about, um, for us, it's, it's about, um, quality over mm-hmm. quantity. And, you know, just because, you know, every weekend you're, you're booked for a wedding, that's not necessarily a sign of success. Um, yeah. you know, so, um, I mean, it, it can be for some, just in my business, it isn't. And so it's really about, uh, we know our limit, our team. Um, uh, you know, I have a, a small team and we know what we can do. And so we absolutely, first and for- foremost, our couples always come first. So, um, you know, if we, it's typically based on this type of services, one wedding a weekend. Um, and then, um, as far as, you know, in terms of a number per, per year or something or per season, that's a little more difficult to gauge mm-hmm. just because it depends, you know, there's so many logistics de- depending on if we're traveling and what kind of setup we have and what, you know, the design looks like. Um, but, um, but 2019 is going to be really exciting for us because there's so many new designs and, and trends for 2019. And we have some really amazing, sweet couples that, um, are really kind of pushing us outside of our comfort box in, oh, really? in terms of in terms of design and wanting some really cool installations. Yeah, funny how you bring up the comfort zone. That's the exact reason why I started this podcast. Is oh yeah, because it's something that I'm not comfortable with. You mm-hmm. know? So um, that is definitely the theme for 2019: just doing things that um, make you feel uncomfortable, that scare you. Um, sure. We kind of talked a little bit before off mic about that. And, um, mm-hmm. So just talking to individual individuals like yourself and uh, educating myself more in the wedding industry of uh, what goes behind, what goes on behind the scenes, you know, how you plan a wedding, how you um, sit down with clients. So if you could maybe talk me through what's your process like for that, Um, how do you gain clients? Is it strictly word of mouth? Do you do any type of advertising? Yeah. Um, well, that's a great question. So we do, I, I'll speak to this year because this year has been really a pivotal year for us. Um, but we have always, um, I mean, so we're, we're on social media mm-hmm. and um, throughout the years we've done some tr- tremendous events and weddings. And so our portfolio has really expanded and is really, you know, is, has expanded um, and so when, when clients are, you know, when they want to see past work, they'll be able to look at past weddings that we've done and get a sense of our style and what we can do in the transformations, um, of, of rooms and, and whatnot. So that has helped. Um, but we've always partnered up with the folks at Wisconsin Bride for advertising, which has been really great. Um, and, also, I'm finding that a lot of couples are finding us through Instagram, which has been really awesome too for us. So that's, you know, not necessarily any paid advertisement, but our portfolio has really kind of spoken for itself, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, so that has been, that has acted as advertisement. And then also, um, we have one local, uh, wedding planning show in the area, and, and um, it was actually this just this past weekend. So this is the second year that we've participated in the wedding show, and um, I will say, you know, this this year it was a little slower just because of the negative temps <laughs> and the the massive snowstorm that was rolling in. But 
it was another great opportunity to network um, or actually meet newly engaged couples. And we chatted with um, a few of uh, couples who have already hired us who are just at the show for oh, that, cool. you know, experience and meeting some other vendors. And, um, and just also it was a great opportunity to network with other um, local professionals in the area. Cool. Um, so now that you have, you know, you, you booked your clients and yeah. you sit down for your first initial meeting, um, do you, are you present for all the other vendor meetings? It depends on the type of service that the couple selects. Um, so our most popular package is, is, is w- the name of it is our weekend coordination package and it includes design. Um, and so that, that's our most popular package that does not include, um, us being present at all of the vendor meetings mm-hmm. with the exception of the florist meeting because in t- when we're speaking design I mean florals take on I mean uh, you know florals are its own language yeah, in the in the design world and so in florals play such an important role and so we think it's you know to to have a cohesive design, it's very important that we're present at those meetings uh, with the florist. Um, so that meeting includes us being there. However, any other vendors, it does not. But for a full coordination package, this is, you know, this is the couple just got engaged and it's kind of hand holding all the way to the aisle. We're present at, at all of those tastings. So caters, the food tasting. Well, the, uh, the food tastings, tasting. I would say the are the best ones to be present at. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this weekend I'll be in Milwaukee oh, awesome. at, and uh, for a food tasting and we have two cake tastings, uh, which will be really exciting um, and a veil fitting. I mean, so yeah. <laughs> the dress is done, but we have a custom veil and all those um, exciting things. Yeah. Very, very exciting. Things um, that I don't mm-hmm. get to experience because I just come in on the day of sure, um, and, you know, film it all, which, mm-hmm. which is great. But, um, and then seeing how hard you guys work behind the scenes, uh, wh- what time do you usually show up um, in that package that you just recognized? Do you show up the night before? Do you come in the day of? How is yeah, that? that also is dependent on a few factors. Uh, first of all, we want to be respectful of the venue that we're in. And that means the venue dictates when we come in. Um, so sometimes we're really lucky and we're able to get in the night before. And then my team and I will be there beginning the transformation of the venue. And other times, um, we're not able to, because usually the venue has a, you know, maybe has an event that evening. Yeah. So we're, then we're in bright and early the day of the wedding and we have, and then usually we add a few extra people to our team because we only have a few hours to create that transformation Mm -hmm. of the venue. Um, but that will, you know, you, it it will be the venue that dictates when we're able to get in and determine or begin that transformation. So you, you bring up the, your team, how many people are on your team? We have a total of five people on our team. Oh, nice. um, however, that can increase mm-hmm. um, due to the, the size of the events that we have. What time do you leave? How long do you stay? That also, um, so of course, I'm on site the entire day from early morning all the way to last song and mm-hmm. beyond. Um, and, and the same with, I always have an assistant with me now, whether they're doing shifts or whether they're, you know, the, obviously I don't make them stay the yeah. entire time. Yeah. Um, but, um, so, but someone is always with me. I have an assistant, um, planner with me on site throughout the day. So they, they may, you know, change, um, you know, work is split it up between two people, two or three people. But, um, so usually I will say on average, we're use, usually departing the venue by, um, I would say, anywhere between 1.30 a.m. and 2 a.m. Departing the venue and then, you know, pulling in the driveway it could be anywhere up to, you know, 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> so the next day is pretty much just mm-hmm. laying around, maybe drinking some coffee and um, really not trying to use your brain that much, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, the next day is kind of, you know, photographers describe it as, oh, I know that Jenna Kutcher had mentioned it was kind of like a wedding hangover yeah, type of feeling. And and yeah, that's exactly what we experience. Um, it's just kind of sleeping in the next morning. Um, we always, I always make sure to, you know, check on the couples the next day, yeah. um, whether it's just, you know, if you, sometimes they're, 
our last minute questions like, you know, like, oh, did you happen to see my brother's cufflinks or, or something, you know, you know, last, you know, things like that. But um, always checking in just to see, you know, if, if, if you know, how everything was yeah. and if they had any questions. Um, but yeah, it's usually the next day that we're, we're rolling in. <laughs> we, we usually leave a little bit earlier, um, like after the, the, the first dances and sure. requested to yeah. stick around a little bit longer, but I'm up really late, usually offloading footage onto my computer and backing mm -hmm. it up. And so I totally understand that, uh, that wedding hangover the next morning. <laughs> and especially with me, I have two young children. Um, I can't sleep past like seven o'clock in the morning. So, oh goodness. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm up with them and it's, uh, it's definitely the, I'm going to drink like as much Gatorade and water as possible. And, um, mm -hmm. I've also found during the day, um, not many people notice what type of shoes I'm wearing. So I go for comfort over style. Um, I have like, you know, Crocs shoes that I will wear. Okay. <laughs> and I don't know if what, if you have any advice on, um, other wedding professionals, what you found that works for yourself for being comfort being as comfortable as you can for the day. Yeah, there are, there's this really um, great company and I'm, I'm sorry. Um, it's more geared toward, Ladies, toward wi yeah, women, <laughs> yeah. um, but there's this company called birdies mm -hmm. and it's, um, and actually Meghan Markle was spotted wearing them um, a couple months ago um, when she and um, Prince Harry took a trip to California. So that was really exciting, but it's called birdie slippers and they're really stylish flats um, that are kind of secretly a slipper, but no one would ever know that because they're, they're pretty stylish, but, um, they're, they're really nice. Um, and they kind of combine that elevated style with comfort and everyday versatility. Um, so I really, I, I like those personally and they have some really fun styles. Usually on wedding day, we're in black. Um, mm. just it's, it's professional and, um, it, it allows us, you know, to let the bride shine in the wedding party. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then there's another company called Rothy's. Um, and Rothy's is also some very stylish, um, I would say flats for women. Um, and they have offer a lot of versatility as well. And, and those are, they're very comfortable as well. And in fact, um, that those were my first pair of shoes recommended by another wedding planner. Awesome. So those, yeah, they're really great. Yeah. Yeah. It may seem like a weird question, but it's just something that I've struggled with myself. I, I went the, I'm going to get these awesome $300 dress shoes and I wear them all day and I can't walk the next day. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> then I went to Skechers and then other, um, I finally settled on these, uh, kind of dressy sneakers that are sure. made by, by Crocs and, and, yeah, I know when people think Crocs, you think like the ones from, um, you see nurses wearing or whatever. But, oh, sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but they make some nice like styles. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, um, it's all about comfort because we are oh, on yeah. our feet the entire day. And, you know, the last thing you, you want is, you know, mm -hmm. for your feet to hurt or anything like yeah. that. So, yeah, it's definitely about comfort. Awesome. So, as we're kind of wrapping up, um, what, would the what would your client expect from you like um how would how would they want to proceed in booking you um how far out do you book in advance um so we book out a year um so we're really lucky to be starting to work with the 20 clients in 2020 which is really exciting um but uh yeah so we have um we're starting to work with 2020 clients um so we can book out up to a year okay and I guess our clients, what sets us apart, um, not only, I mean, our service, I think, at, like, very similar to other wedding planners um, in the industry, you know, our week of coordination, partial planning, design, full coordination, I think that is pretty standard. Um, but a few things that set us apart is, you know, we believe that your day should be as unique as you are. And although, you know, we're known for our romantic styling and adding texture, but really when we sit down and create a custom proposal tailored to our client's vision and style, it's really going to be reflective 
of their personality and their love story. So I always say my favorite moment is, you know, working with that client at that initial meeting and finding out, you know, a lot of times we experience that our couples are overwhelmed and they'll send us to to their Pinterest board, which is full of images and and, you know, uh, thousands of images. Yes. And so we we send them a very detailed client questionnaire. And then we sit back and my team and I design a very comprehensive, detailed proposal. And then, you know, so we're working with the client. They see the proposal, what we're going to be designing. And then we're working with them, you know, throughout that journey to the aisle. And then the moment they, receive the, they see the reception for the first time and they're like, Oh my gosh, this is exactly what we wanted. Awesome. That is that is one of my, you know, favorite experiences. Um but also, you know, uh, our passion and our philosophy is what sets us apart. You know, our passion is beautiful design and flawless execution, um all while creating a, a fun and um creative planning process. With my background in concierge, I'm always not only ensuring that every detail is accounted for, but I'm always, you know, kind of thinking about the next step and anticipating their needs, um, which has always provided that extra service or, Mm -hmm. um, you know, that they can expect from at full eye events. Yeah. Great. That's a great answer. Um, so, where can they reach you? What would be the best way to contact you, phone, website? Sure. Whatever is, I guess, I suppose whatever is best for, for them, but there's multiple channels. Uh, we're on Facebook at At Full Eye Events, also um, on Instagram at At Full Eye Events, and that's E T V O I L A Events. Our website is at Voila Event Planning.com. Otherwise, you can also get a hold of us. Um, via phone okay. at 715-310-7807. Is there anything else you'd like to plug? Any other upcoming events that you um, are hosting? Um, for Well, I guess I was going to talk about Valentine's Day. We're doing a um, floor, uh, designer arrangements. However, by the time that this posts, yeah. it'll be after that. So um, I think I think we've covered a lot. Um, I just want to thank you so much for the opportunity. It was a pleasure speaking with you today. Well, thank you, Allison, and you have a great day.